So this red curve is the graph of f of x, and this blue curve is the graph of g of x, and I want to try to express g of x in terms of f of x. And so let's see how they're related. So we pick any x, and we could start right here at the vertex of f of x, and we see that at least at that point, g of x is exactly one higher than that. So g of two, I could write this down, g of two, g of two is equal to is equal to f of two, f of two plus one, plus one. Let's see if that's true for any x. So then we can just sample over here. Well, let's see, g of, let's see, f of four is right over here. g of four is one more than that. G, f, of, f of six is right here. g of six is one more than that. So it looks like if we pick any point over here, even though there's a little bit of an optical illusion, it looks like they get closer together. They do if you look, try to find the closest distance between the two, but if you look at vertical distance, you see that it stays a constant, it stays a constant one. So we can actually generalize this. This is true for any x. g of x is equal to f of x is equal to f of x plus one. Let's do a few more examples of this. So right over here, here is f of x in red again. And here is g of x. And so let's say we picked x equals negative four. This is f of negative four. And we, say, we see g of negative four is two less than that. And we see whatever f of x is, g of x, no matter, where we, no matter what x we pick, g of x seems to be exactly two less. g of x is exactly, exactly two less. So in this case, very similar to the other one, g of x is going to be equal to f of x, but instead of adding, we're going to subtract two from f of x, f of x minus two. Let's do a few more examples. So here we have f of x in red again. I'll relabel it, f of x, and here is g of x. Here is g of x. So let's think about it a little bit. Let's pick, a, let's pick an arbitrary point here. Let's say we have in red here, this is this point right over there, is the value of f of three. So that, or f of negative three, I should say. This is negative three, this is the point, negative three f of three. So negative three f of three. Now g hits that same value when x is equal to negative one. When x is equal to negative one. So let's think about this. g, g of negative one, is equal to f of negative three. f of negative three is equal to f of negative three. And we could do that with a bunch of points. We could see that g of, g of zero, g of zero, which is right there. Let me do it in a color you can see. g of zero is equivalent, is equivalent to f of negative two. So let me write that down. g of zero is equal to f of negative two. We could keep doing that. We could say g of one. g of one, g of one, which is right over here, this is one, g of one is equal to f of negative one. g of one is equal to f of negative one. So I think you see the pattern here. G of whatever is equal to f of, is equal to the, the function evaluated at two less than whatever is here. So we could say, we could say that g of x is equal to f of, well it's gonna be two less than x. So f of x minus two. So this is the relationship. G of x is equal to f of x minus two. And it's important to realize here, when I did f of x minus two here, and remember, I'm taking, I'm taking, the function is being evaluated, this, this is the input, x minus two is the input. When I subtract the two, this is shifting the function to the right, which is a little bit counterintuitive unless you go through this exercise right over here. So g of x is equal to f of x minus two. If it was f of x plus two, we would have actually shifted f to the left. Now let's think about this one. This one is, seems kind of wacky. So first of all, g of x, it's, it, it almost looks like a mirror image, but it looks like it's been flattened out. So let's think of it this way. Let's take the mirror image of what g of x is. So I'm gonna try my best to take the mirror image of it. So let's see, it gets to about two there. 
then it gets pretty close to one right over there, and then it gets about right over there. So if I were to take its mirror image, it looks something, it looks something like this. Its mirror image, if I were to reflect it across the, across the x-axis, it looks something like this. It looks something like this. So this right over here, this right over here, we would call, so if this is negative, if this is g of x, if this is g of x, when we flip it that way, this is the negative g of x. Negative g of x. When x equals 4, g of x looks like it's, I don't know, about negative 3.5. You take the negative of that, you get positive. I guess it should be closer to, you get positive 3.5 if you were to take the exact mirror image. So that's negative g of x. But that still doesn't get us there. It looks like we actually have to triple this value for any point. And you see it here. This, this gets to 2, but we need to get to 6. This gets to 1, but we need to get to 3. So it looks like this red graph right over here is 3 times this graph. So this is 3 times negative g of x, which is equal to negative 3 g of x. So here we have f of x is equal to negative 3 times g of x. And if we wanted to solve for g of x, write g of x in terms of f of x, we would write, dividing both sides by negative 3, g of x is equal to negative one-third f of x. Negative one-third f of x.